Now, let's see what we've got here. This'll do. In 2015, my neighbors cut down a pine tree and they gratefully gave me access to a log. Or three. I let them dry in my shed for several years and then I split them with a mall. Since the overall shape of it was somewhat wedge shaped, I cut off some of the excess on my bandsaw. Now I'm going to use this circle gauge to mark the center of the circle as best I can. And drill a 3 8 inch hole for the worm screw. Oh, and of course, the jig to make the whole thing round. Now to slide that hole, I drilled into the dowel and the jig. And turn the whole thing around. So I have a more round blank to use in my lathe. Screw the whole thing onto the worm screw. And of course I still have some flat spots. So, I will round it up. Using a half inch pole gouge, probably not the best tool for the job. A little thicker one might be better, but that's what I've got. Since these tools generally run over $100 each, I only have so many. I have to make do with what I have. Got to flatten out the bottom a little bit. Start out a little bit on the curve of the bottom. Slide the tool across the top, and if it doesn't bounce, that means I'm probably round. No flat spots. Now I'm going to work on making my tenon. So I can flip it around and hollow out the inside. As you make these cuts, you try to keep the flat of the bowl gouge against the work. You turn it as you go around to match the curvature that you're trying to create. Bump up the speed a little bit here, try to get a cleaner cut. So I've decided I'm going to kind of go for an OG type of curve, curves in at the top and then out towards the bottom. Or I suppose that's concave at the top and convex at the bottom, I'm not sure. Here's a little real-time cut to show you how fast I generally go. Take it nice and slow. This is actually a finishing type of cut. I'm trying to take a very light cut so it makes a smooth surface on the outside of the bowl. And you see me 
aiming the tool so as to keep the flat of the tool against the bowl. Now the top section wasn't flat so I'm coming back a little bit more so I can have uh, the top section still flare out a little bit. This cut I'm making here is a scraping cut. Use the tool with the flute painted, pointed towards the bowl. Generally does not give you as clean a cut as the pushing cut. It does reduce your likelihood for a catch though. And the uh, flared out edge of the bowl is thinner of course than the rest of it so if you do get a catch it's a little more catastrophic. refine the shape a little bit. Now on to sanding. Um, starting at 120. Always take time to stop the lathe at the end and sand along with the grain. It's fine to sand with the lathe on, but you will end up with some circular sanding marks that you want to get rid of by sanding along with the grain afterwards. Here's some cellulose sanding sealer along with 50-50 uh, with uh, lacquer thinner. And although pine is a very inexpensive and not particularly valuable wood, you can see that it has a nice color to it once you get the sanding sealer on there. A little more sanding and a wipe down, and we're going to go for some wipe-on polyacrylic. Now the next day I noticed there were some cracks around the edge of the bowl so I'm going to try to save the bowl by dropping in a little bit of CA glue. The paper towel is to keep it from from flowing all over the outside of my uh, finished product there. Although it doesn't stick very well after you get the polyacrylic on there. I really want it inside the crack anyway, so that's just fine. Take it off the worm screw. And I'm going to flip it around so I can hollow it out. So I'll tighten it down a little bit and then I'll bring in the tail stock and push it in that hole in the end where the worm screw was as I loosen up the tail stock and tighten it back down to try to make sure that it's running true when I start up again. And I'll turn my lathe out a bit to ease my access into the center of the bowl. Bring up the tool rest. And it seems to be running pretty true. Okay, here we go with our bowl gouge and we'll start hollowing this out. I'm 
I learned this hollow, hollowing out technique from Phil Anderson. You start towards the edge and you leave some of the center in intact as you go down. It gives it more mass and less chance to vibrate. And if the center ever gets in your way, then you take it down some and you just work your way down towards the bottom of the bolt in that fashion. I find it's easier to keep the bowl thin and uniform in thickness because I can get a good idea of how thick it is by based on where my tool's at. Oh, ow, oh, ow. As you can no doubt see, I had a catch. A rather nasty catch at that. I think this particular piece of pine is going to end up in the burn pile. I suppose I could do something much smaller than this, but I don't really want to, especially after the painful catch I had. It bruised up my hand pretty good, swollen. I even went to the doctor and had him x-ray it. Luckily, no broken bones, but I do have to rest this hand for, for some time. So I guess I'll be taking about a week off. Of course, woodworking is uh, innately somewhat dangerous. A lot of little factors can go into what causes problems. In this case, I think there's a multitude of problems. My chuck has some residue in the grooves, I've noted and that probably kept it from grabbing on as tightly as it could. A soft wood like this also tends to compress more, and so as you're working on it, it possibly becomes a little looser. I think my bowl gouge was not as sharp as it should have been. I can see from these notches cut out around the edges that it probably wasn't cutting very well even before I got to here. So keep your bowl gouge sharpened. Keep your tools clean. It was feeling a little sketchy when I was around here, cutting around here, and I should have stopped at that point and investigated a little bit more. I did not. So this is my fault. Eh, I'm the one who suffers. So I suppose it's fair, <laughs> if not really desirable. Anyway, looks like we're not going to have a lovely pine bowl to show you this week. As always, next time. Thanks for watching.